Hello, this is Mark McRory, and I'm here to talk about the Shure SM58 microphone. Now, what can be said about these that hasn't already been said? I don't know. I do have a couple things I'd like to add to the, the usual dialogue on these microphones. And, um, and then just tell people about it who may or may not know about it. So, the Shure SM58 was designed uh, to go with the Shure Vocal Master PA. It was a 100 watt PA, uh, which at the time was considered to be loud. Nowadays, not so loud. And uh, it would all, usually be working, it would usually be on 10, if it, you know, this is in the rock and roll guitar band era. Um, these things were really overworked and they were prone to feeding back. Um, but this microphone was uh, considered to be an anti-feedback microphone because it would, um, it's uh, very uh, insensitive. It's very close address. You get back a foot and uh, you lose more than half of your volume. You get back a couple feet and you, you're essentially you're... It's an isolation booth and a microphone in one. So that's why it works so well uh, in live situations, very loud bands, um, feedback prevention. It's still used to this day for those things like, oh, it's not the greatest sounding microphone in the world, but it also makes an effective weapon. You can defend yourself in a bar fight with it, uh, usually all metal uh, construction and uh, very durable. You can, uh, people have joked about or, you know, hammering nails with it and then using it. Um, it is a, I think that might have been a, Sure, I think I saw a picture of someone hammering a nail with that with the Shure SM57, 58. Uh, oh, what's the difference between 58 and 57? It's very simple. Um, the uh, essentially it's the the cover. The capsule's the same. The transformer's the same. It's um, essentially they call this omni-directional, but it's not really omni. It's kind of cardioid. It likes to hear things that are right in front of it, and especially directly in front of it. Omni would it would would you know, imply, you know, around the backside as well, um, and then the SM57 is called a uh, cord cardioid, but it's very hyper cardioid. It's uh, the the head basket um, design is uh, very focused on whatever is directly in front of it, which is why people generally use them for instruments, amplifiers, uh, drums, things like that. But they also um, they can substitute for each other in a pinch. So, and also when we're talking about drums, the human voice, uh, the people love to put them on snare drums, hand drums, uh, because it's so deaf. The, the microphone is so deaf that it's uh, difficult to overload with very high sound pressure, um, very high sound pressure sources. It, it continues to perform. Um, this was also probably the first low impedance microphone. It's a 50 ohm output, 50 ish, 50 60. Um, previous to it, the microphones are usually a couple hundred ohms. Um, this very low impedance um, makes for um, a lower noise because uh, it, has, it has an output. Tra it's a balanced output. It has an output transformer in the body and an output transformer, hopefully in the PA where you're going, and that would uh, eliminate uh, some uh, cable noise and interference like that. Now, I'm also going to add one little tip on the Shure SM58. Here's the, the reason I want to talk about this microphone. Is I often see people doing what they call working the microphone, which is singing and then moving your head back and moving it forward. And the problem is that it doesn't... This microphone is so insensitive that once you get a foot away from your mouth, it, essentially what you're doing disappears. And people who do that, well, the idea is, you know, why do people do that? They're afraid of overloading the microphone. Uh, they're afraid of overloading the mixer uh, that's on the other end. They're afraid of, um, they think that they're, you know, kind of doing the work of a compressor. They're turning down their loud stuff and turning up their quiet stuff. But they're actually just disappearing and coming back into, into focus. And so and when I'm working with someone and they're, they're doing this thing where they they're screaming like they're uh, Aretha Franklin. Well, first of all, they're not Aretha Franklin. But second of all, um, when you often see people working the microphone like Frank Sinatra, Marvin Gaye, or, it was often a condenser microphone they were using. And condenser microphones are very sensitive, and you can overload them easily. Um, you can ruin the capsule by screaming into it. So, getting back a little, so and people would and they, you know, be wearing headphones, and they could kind of like judge how they're doing that. But in live music situations, I see a lot of people with the SM58 doing that thing, pulling back, pulling forward, and it just kind of, they're not doing it in, it's not really making a compression effect. It's not making it louder and quieter. It's just, 
I mean, it's not making the loud and quiets even. It's just making uh, them disappear as they get away from the microphone. So what I want to talk about with this microphone is my advice to everyone, always with a Shure SM58, is get as close to it as you possibly can without choking on it and use it like that. It, uh, you get a really nice presence boost in the low end. Um, you get a, a full range EQ. Uh, you get a nice sound. And anything, when you're using the Shure microphone, if you're not directly on it, if you're anywhere back from it, you get a uh, exponential loss in sound in general. And then uh, sound quality equalization curve goes a little wacky. So, um, that's it. If you're, if you're using an SM58 for anything... Oops. Stay. If you're using your SM58 for anything. Hello. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's one of those uh, plug-in things. What do you call those? Stickers. Uh, if you're using your SM58 for anything, uh, be right on it. Uh, especially modern PAs. You know, If you see anyone who has any kind of digital PA, it's all got compression built in. It all... Um, um, there's no real need for the singer to regulate their own volume with the microphone. Uh, it might make you feel cool. It might be part of your stage gig. That's that's all right if, if that is uh, something that makes you look impressive or look more like Aretha Franklin or Frank Sinatra. Then maybe you should do it. But there is no actual need to do it. Um, so that's the rundown on the SM58. Thanks for watching.